Hello all, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me tonight. It is relax and craft time. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And you can get a free pattern at penguinandfish.com. So go check that out. Uh, I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time where we relax and craft and work on a project together uh, hey Linda, thanks for joining us. Uh, right now I am working on the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month quilt along. We are on block four, which is the last block in the quilt. Here is a picture of the quilt right there. Our colors are a bit different than this, but those are the four blocks. And we are working on block four, which is this feller right here. I am doing a combination of needle turn applique and embroidery and we are still appliqueing. So we have everything done except for the flowers and then we got a whole pile of leaves to put on here eventually. <laughs> Tonight we're going to work on the petals. So let's see, I don't know how, how many will get done but it'd be awesome if we got all of them done, uh, all the petals. And then when we come back on Monday. Uh, we'll work on these inside circles and then start the leaves as well. So cruising along and then we will embroider the whole thing uh, with my giant, oh, it's over here, my big cone of coral floss here. <laughs> so here's a normal skein of floss. Here's the big cone that I use for my stuff. So we'll be using that in a few days here once we get done with all the needle turn applique. So if you're just coming in, there is also, oh, I guess I didn't talk about it yet, but there is a giveaway. This is the uh, last video for the giveaway. And the giveaway for this block is the Ulfa folding cutting mat, which is pretty amazing right here. And it is also, it's that and a rotary cutter from Ulfa with their in, a couple endurance blades for the cutter as well. The endurance blades are supposed to last longer than normal blades. I don't know, we'll see, I'll give them a little test. So, all right, that is the giveaway. And uh, to enter, you can uh, put the hashtag, hashtag I love home quilt in the comment section on this Facebook Live or any of my Facebook Lives from this week. And you can do that whether you're watching it live or if you're watching it in a replay. So I'll let this go till, uh, till tomorrow too. So on Saturday, if you're watching the replay, uh, then you can do the hashtag I love uh, home quilt then as well to enter. And you can enter on YouTube if you are watching this on the YouTube replay and uh, uh, just click subscribe and then comment hashtag I love home quilt. And I will check the subscription. So like uh, uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure to like the Penguin and Fish page. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe for the Penguin and Fish movies page. That's where all these videos end up. They live forever on YouTube on the Penguin and Fish movies page. So you can check that out there. All right, and that is that guys. Let's get starting to stitch tonight. I wanna see how many of these petals we can get done. Hope you all had a nice Friday. Hello everyone who's popping in here tonight. All right, so I did a little assessment of my uh, scraps that we've collected so far on here. And this is kind of all we got right here that would work for the petals. And I'm kind of excited about the idea of the, pe the petals um, just being scraps. So, uh, this is what we got. So it's going to be some combination of this. So we had talked about um, maybe doing some of the petals the same color and some different. And now that I know that this is really all I have here, uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I think we'll put another one of these blue guys in. It actually might be orange because we could get this petal here. Yeah, we can fussy cut some things. So maybe three of these blues and a couple other ones. And then maybe the same thing up here, three blues and you know, a couple couple other guys. I think, I think that might be the deal. Oh, thanks Athena, I appreciate that. And uh, hello to everyone popping in. Oh yeah, I'm really loving these petals too. You had the... Oh, did you do yours all different too, Gretchen? I'm gonna have to check that out. I might have saw it 
today if you posted it in the crafters group, but uh, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. If any of you guys are working on this project or have any projects that you would like to share in a really nice group of people, uh, feel free to come over onto Facebook, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. We got a good group of folks there and you can share anything you're working on on in there. Just click join and I will let you in. All right, so I think let's start here. I'm gonna put it on this little petal right there. So, all right, I'm gonna bring my little uh, mat over again, or my uh, light table. I want some of these orange petals in here. I think they are pretty cute. So I'm just outlining that shape. I was thinking of just cutting out a template out of paper for all these petals, but then I realized that all the petals are actually a little bit different from each other. So then I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just, I'll just trace it for each one. It's a little cumbersome, you know, to have to bring down the, uh, the mat every single, or not, I keep saying the mat, the, um, the, uh, light table every single time, but I think because they are all different, this is going to be a little bit easier. So I traced, Again, I, I traced the petal and then I just extended it a bit on either side because uh, this circle is going to cover it all up. So we need it, we need it to go at least as far underneath there. All right, zoop, out of here. All right, let's cut this filler out. So slightly less than a quarter inch seam allowance. Trimming it around. And again, this is needle turn applique. It's probably the uh, the longest route we could have taken on this project. Uh, except for if we did the whole thing needle turn applique. That, that would have taken even longer. But it is something I wanted to get better at. And uh, just, you know, improve on. And I think... I'm definitely getting better from this project, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about, about it. All right, I think we're pretty matched up there. Let's get Phil out here. He's got our pins, Phil pins, and uh, Zeb needle. I think that's Zeb Ned. How about that? Zeb Ned for needle. <laughs> so those are going to be their first and last names. We'll do Phil pins and Zeb Ned. <laughs> Oh man, I get excited too easily, I think. All right, and uh, so Zeb Pen, or Zeb uh, Ned for needle. <laughs> oh man, makes me laugh. Get our needle out here. All right, let's stitch this orangey little flower petal onto here. So we got a little more info from Customs today on the scissors, the little scissors guys here. And according to them, it's delayed because of fog and weather. So I don't know. We'll check in on Monday again and see if that's still the case. That's, I don't know, seemed a little odd, but who knows? All right, so tucking these guys under, get this started. But that is all we're waiting on, and then we'll get the, the uh, embroidery supplies bundles out right after we get the scissors in. Okay. Let's get cruising here. Ooh, I maybe did not match this up very well. I think this one maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll not remove the bulk and we'll see what happens. Uh, let's get the needle back. There, I'm just kind of rearranging it a little. I'm going to go use the back 
lines as my guide on this. I think that will work out for us. A lot of this is going to be behind that circle flower, so we're going to be okay here if it's not as circular or gentle, gentle, um, gentle arcs here. All right, let's uh, coming up to this first curve here. Alrighty. Ooh, geez, I just stabbed myself. All right, here we go. Well, that's something I haven't had to do on Facebook Live. I hope that wasn't just uh, someone with a typo, but I, uh, uh, that's the first user I've had to block during a Facebook Live. That was like my whole game during uh, Periscope was just continually blocking people. <laughs> uh. All right. I am... Again, following this outer line. Oh, you've sewed your skin. Yeah, I've sewed through my skin a few times. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, let's... So I've completely abandoned my... Uh, line on the front here and I'm using the back line because right now I think that's a little bit more it's gonna get our flower a little bit more accurate I think and I and I have enough seam allowance for it too Alrighty. Oh, Gretchen, I'm not even, maybe the comment didn't even show up on your guys' end. I don't know. This is kind of going quick. So I didn't do any of the, any of the um, snipping the edges for the, for the, this curve. And I think it's going to be just fine. And I'm okay if there's a little extra bulk actually too. But yeah, we're going to get this guy done quick here. I like that this has a little bit of orange in too. Oh, we're going to have a lot of excess that I can trim. Hooey! It is getting... Uh, Colder and colder outside here guys. I could barely even open the door to get the mail today. I'm such a wimp It's gonna get so much worse, but it was uh, in the, the 20s or today, but with the wind chill feeling like um, Like in the single digits so <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, I know Gretchen is it's funny. Um, that was the first instance of that that I've had on on Facebook Live, but that literally was, you know, all I was doing back on Periscope was just blocking people, and way worse than that, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just, uh, did you see that? I totally, like, went like a eighth of an inch into my skin there. Oh man, I don't know. It's gonna be one of those nights that I stab myself the whole time. Yeah, that's that's who it was, Bonnie. Twenty six degrees in Central Park tonight. Ooh. 
Oh, I know, Gretchen, the leaves. At least with the leaves, I had a little bit of practice on with the last one, but I think these ones are smaller. These ones seem a bit smaller than the last ones. I don't know. All right. Let's tie this off. And we will be good. So petal number one. Maybe we can get at least one of these flowers all finished tonight yet. That would be pretty nice. All right. Windchill 30. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, and it was really, really windy today, too. All right, so I think I can trim off. Here, let's put the needle into fill there, or Zeb. Um, I think I can trim quite a bit of this off. Yeah, this whole flap here. Let's do that right away. This is maybe a bit big of a scissors, but I just really like the scissors. <laughs> exactly, Bonnie. All right, uh, next up. So this is gonna definitely read as orange, which is kind of cool. Um, let's put some other color in there before um, putting another one of these. I think I wanna do like a yellow one up here, and then maybe we do another blue here. And we got, um, I think we got a little bit of this. We could put this guy in, or actually maybe this green because it's not over here. Um, We'll put this one, since it matches this, we'll put it like way up here on this other flower or something. So, okay, here's my plan. I know it looks crazy, but I think that's my plan. All right, let's uh, set those aside. We'll do this yellow one next. All right, let's get this guy out again. I could pick um, kind of more yellowish or some of this white. I think we'll go yellow. So how about right there? Easy to trace this one. And again, I'm gonna use the lines on my background piece as a guide, but it is helpful to have it on the front here as well. All right, I'm extending it over a little bit and then we'll just draw a line there. All right. Itty bitty. Yeah, I didn't even know if I'd be able to use the blocking tool since I've never done it here, but it worked just the same as in Periscope. <laughs> Easy peasy to, to block people, so that's good to know. <laughs> uh, so watch out. <laughs> All right, let's bring this guy back here. Um, match it up as best we can. I think that's not too shabby. Let's see, pin it right here. And again, I'm, I'm pinning from the back so my thread doesn't catch on the needle. Okay, thread, needle. Oh my gosh, Patricia, that's a Bummer, well, I'm happy you're here now. All right. We got one petal done while you while you were out. Yeah, I know, right, Gretchen? So I probably had enough thread on my last, um, on the needle after the last petal, but it, it gets kind of curly and bent, the thread after doing the, the needle turn after a little while. So I like getting just a, pre a fresh piece of thread. And this is, this is a way too long of a piece, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm tossing out little pieces of thread. So this crosses over a lot, but that's okay. The the circle kind of goes through right at the point of all of these. Uh, so that's that's going to be the goal. So it doesn't matter that I'm, you know, overlapping this petal here. It's perfectly fine. It's going to be covered up. 
Oh, you're using that thread magic. Oh, so that thread magic, I don't know if you guys heard, but they're not manufacturing that anymore. So if you, if you like it and you want to have it forever, you better go out and find it somewhere. Um, do a search, see who's still selling it. Oh, you're watching while cutting up a brick of beeswax to melt. Oh, nice, into a little candy making tin to make cute little heart-shaped beeswax. Oh, Robin, that's so sweet. What a fun idea. Oh, I love that. Especially if you have a lot of friends who do like needle turn or something, that, that'd be, that's super cute. I know it's time to think about all that like giftiness already. Man, I'm telling you, these holidays, or this season, this winter, just in general, is just here all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know. It feels it feels like crazy sudden to me. Maybe it's not, but I don't know. To me, it's like, dang, it's Thanksgiving in less than two weeks, and then it's Christmas, and man, I don't know. All right, I think that works. Could have probably tucked it under a little bit more, but I was impatient. Just tucking in little by little. This is uh, definitely this yellow, and I, I know I said it when we were working on the yellow heart. Um, it's a little thicker. Are there something a little different about this fabric that's making it not quite as easy as some of these other fabrics to flip it under? I don't know, Long John's out exactly. Bracelet, I love the cozy, the smell, and the fire, and the food. Yep, for sure, Gretchen, that's true. I did have a candle here that smells like evergreen that I really like, but I think it, we're almost out of it. I might have to buy another one of those and just have it running. Just have it on in the evenings. That'd be nice. Get tucked under there. I have to like overly tuck it under and then poof it back out. This is fun doing all the petals separately. I mean, I don't, it's definitely, um, it's kind of nice not to have to think about having to deal with any inner points. So from that standpoint, it's fun. It's nice doing them all as separate petals. I mean, maybe it's taking longer or I don't know, but maybe not because those inner points kind of take some finagling, but I think it's more relaxing. I gotta do this again. Um, maybe it's more relaxing doing all these individually. I'm having fun with it. I think it'll be cute all different colors. Oh man, I just can't get, it keeps wanting to fold there. I don't want it to fold there. I think I can just scooch the bump under too. Yeah, yellow fabric. It's not as nice as the other stuff. Or maybe it's too nice of fabric, you know, and maybe, maybe just like thinner fabric would have looked a little bit better. Don't know, it's hard to tell until, until you start using it, I think. You like the needle turn better than regular applique? Um, I don't know, Connie. I mean, I, I do... It's kind of what I'm, what look I want to go for or how fast I want to get something done. I mean, I, I am enjoying this from a relaxing standpoint of just like chilling and stitching standpoint. Whereas with like, um, raw edge applique where I just fuse it all down to me, that's more about getting a project done and let's see what this looks like quick and, uh, stitch it down. It's more, that's more of like a sewing project for me. And sewing projects aren't 
quite as just chill and relaxing for me, unless I'm just chain piecing like 800 squares together or something like that. But um, so they serve different purposes, I guess, in my in my brain. I kind of like the look of Needle Turn because it is super kind of, it has that vintage feel that I really like. Um, and I like the idea that I'm not using any stabilizers or fusing papers or anything like modern on it. I mean, you know, except for the thread and needles and all that, but still, um, and new fabrics and all that, but I'm not using any special anything else. And there's something satisfying to me about that, but at the same time, when you want to get something done and, or you want to collage something together and, and um, you know, a bunch of pieces of fabric together for like a pattern background or something, you know, then, then the fusible and the raw edge applique, you know, would serve that purpose better. So it kind of just depends what my plan is. But I do, I do really like the needle turn. And I mean, and, I, and I'm especially liking the needle, needle turn these days because it's something I'm trying to get better at. So when I'm trying to learn something new or get better at a topic, I get like a little obsessed about the, po about the topic. So I think I'm kind of like overly interested in needle turn applique right now compared to the raw edge. But if I came up with a project or something that involved the raw edge or like some idea and like, oh man, this would be perfect and raw edge applique would be amazing for this, then, um, then I'd, you know, maybe it'd be all about the raw edge applique at that point. But right now I'm, I'm, into the needle turn for sure. It's more of a, a new discovery for me than anything else. I think we'll just take that to the edge. All right. Oh yeah, let's prep. That's, that's true. I mean, you don't need any extra supplies. You can just have a little piece of fabric, start cutting it. I mean, I wouldn't even need a pattern. I could cut a shape onto fabric. I could actually just take a piece of fabric, draw a shape on here, cut it out and go, go right to it, you know, with needle turn. So that's pretty neat. Listen, I, I like these little kind of dark vines in here. So that's what this petal is going to be. Leafy stems, yeah, that pretty dark color. All right, this is petal number four. Put you back in the scrap pile. This is a little wrinkled, but I'm not gonna bother pressing it. All right. Doesn't look too bad. I'm looking for a pin. Here we go. Oh, you're gonna start your first block on Monday, Alice. Nice. Oh yes. Um, I was very nervous for needle turn as well, Alice. And give yourself some patience and grace and and all that um, because it does take some getting t used to. But. The first time I did it, I mean, you know, I had to learn a lot on the Splendid Sampler and everything. That's when I first started doing the needle turn. But it was immediately, even though it didn't look perfect, um, and I didn't know how to make the curves great, and I didn't know how to make the points great, the act of hand stitching it immediately felt relaxing. And that's kind of what captured me and made me want to learn more. So that's, that's kind of what... I'm excited about with the needle turn at this point. Oh, the soothing part is watching how I progress. Oh, well, thanks, Alice. Yeah, in slow motion over like two years. <laughs> but hey, that's how things get done, right? Just consistent puttering away at it, right? Actively, um, actively trying to get better. I feel like I'm too far away. Need this closer to my face. All right, let's get started. Again, it doesn't matter that I'm overlapping way far into the flower here because the circle goes 
um, right at the, like where these points meet. So all this will be covered up. The little extra ends will make, oh, the butterflies have a dimension. Exactly, Sharon, that's true. So yeah, this will add some poof underneath, underneath our center circle, but I think that's kind of fun. I think that'll be good. Yeah, our butterflies will flutter out a bit. I think they're gonna be super cute in there. I'm excited for that. Not sure which ones I'll use yet or anything, but we'll we'll wait till we get all the petals done. Then we can see what they look like next to the colors and, and all that. Oh gosh, I think this is just I just am liking this these petals all different. I think it's gonna make it, the whole thing look even more patchworky and vintagey, uh, which I think is pretty neat. And I love that, you know, I'm just trying to use up scraps. The problem with using up scraps, though, is that <laughs> your fabric uh, stash never gets any smaller. Or it doesn't seem like it gets any smaller. Because you're just using little scraps here and there. Not big chunks of fabric, but oh well. I suppose if I make enough quilts, then, then I'll catch up with my fabric. Don't be scared, Alice, Mary Alice. It's how you learned first. I got down on myself about it and suddenly, suddenly it even happened without even paying attention. Nice, Robin. Oh, Alice, that is um, picking colors. I'll have to do a whole video on, on how I go picking colors sometimes because um, I... Definitely, that has always been a struggle for me, even though, you know, I went to art school and I studied color and, and all that. But I think, you know, it's, it's the amount of choices, right? So, uh, like, there's just so many choices that it's, it's hard to start even figuring out where to go. Um, so... What I did with this quilt, and I, I picked all my colors beforehand, and I took I took quite a while to do that and played around with some different things. But once I I picked the colors, now they all kind of I know that no matter what I choose from the colors I picked, they're all going to kind of work together and meld together in the end. Like even if one block looks a little funny in the quilt, it will be fine because there'll be other things in that quilt that have that same coloring. Um, so I do, I do work a lot on the upfront though. And what I do for, yeah, a class just about choosing colors and being balanced and tone. Yeah, exactly. So that might be, we should maybe do something like that, Gretchen and, uh, and Alice. Um, but yeah, so how I, go about things and I got to get better at tone too. And what I mean by tone, what I really mean by that is value. So, um, what value is, is how dark or light something is. So it, like if you took a, a black and white photo of something, what looks lighter in that photo and what looks darker in the photo. So black obviously has a dark tone compared to white, which has a light tone. And then, you know, like orange might be, have a medium tone, but it depends what other colors are next to it. So like if you have three light blues next to each other, one might be a little bit lighter and then that would be the light. One would be in the middle and that would be the middle tone and one would be slightly darker and that would be the dark tone, even though you're dealing with a, like three light blues, you know what I mean? Oh, you need a color wheel. Oh, so yeah, okay. And, and people have asked for this before, so this is definitely something, uh, maybe with our next, well, I don't know. We will, we will set something up though. I'll do a, a video on it and we'll talk about it uh, sometime. I'll, I'll, I'll write through it because it is, there is a lot to kind of wrap your head around, but once you think about it in a couple ways, then then it gets kind of easy, and in the end, it's just um, making a decision. 
Um, I always start out with with um, the color I like or the uh, the fabric that I want to work with the most. And then I go from there. I fill it in with fabrics that are lighter and darker than than that one and in colors that kind of go go with it too. And we can definitely dig into that more. But yeah, I think this would be good to go over. Oh yeah, Gretchen, that was the big that was a big thing for me too, what colors for the Splendid Sampler. Um, and I did spend a bunch of time with that too. Light, dark with solids, then prints confuse me. Yep, it is. It's definitely, there are, the, there's so many variables, right? You have lights and darks and patterns and color and, and just motifs even. Um, and then, uh, then they change. They all change if you put another color next to it, right? That's the that's the like weird magic of color. You throw like if I put this like this is on this brown background, but if I put it on a black background, it's just gonna pop and be so much different. So, um, what color is next to it. So that changes all the variables again uh, if you change one thing. So um, it's like, I, I completely understand why it's a challenge. And it's a challenge for me too. So there's a few things that I try and watch for when I'm picking fabric. I mean, we can talk about color theory just in general, like the actual like science of color and color theory. But I like kind of talking about it from a standpoint of choosing fabrics and choosing um, what you want for a project. So I think maybe we'll take that tactic when I, um, I'll have to, I'll put a thing together or something. But, um, you know, it's actually, we could talk about it in several, <laughs> over this, like a whole, we could do a whole class on it really, or a whole, um, like blog series on it or something. So I'll, I'll have to put that, I'll have to put that in the works because I hear ya. It is not, you know, the easiest thing for me at least is it, it's, it's not an intuitive thing for me. Like I have to, I have to really think about it and, you know, and some people just make it look so easy. Right. And that's, that's, uh, can be frustrating. So we'll, we'll do something. Yeah, maybe with the chevron quilt, that might be fun. Although I've already picked my colors for the chevron quilt and I don't think I did very well at different, you know, values and stuff. So I think my chevron, my personal chevron quilt is all gonna like meld together as like all like from far away, it'll just look like one mass of color, which, you know, at the same time, that's a whole nother element of color. What are you going for? Are you going for something where you can see all the shapes perfectly? Or do you want something more muted? And, uh, you know, so you have to, not only do you have to decide color, you have to kind of decide before the color, what's my goal with this, you know? So there's more decisions to be to be had. Oh, maybe the granny square. That might be a good idea, Robin, because I want to do, um, yeah, I, I kind of want to play with that a little bit with color. So yeah, but I am taking note and I, I agree. It, it's something we should do something with and, and talk about a little bit more. So when you do a different block each month or week and the patterns are different, it's hard for me to think in the future about tying it all in. Oh, like with these blocks? Um, I, I, I'm wondering, I think that's what you mean with these block of the months. Um, these were, uh, we got to see all of this beforehand. Like when you, when you sign up for this project, you get the, um, you get to actually see, you get to see the whole project here right away. So it's not a mystery. So you don't, each block was not a mystery in, in um, this. We just didn't get the instructions for each one till then. 
So we did get the chance to see the whole thing and there's how much you need for each fabric. And so we do have, there was kind of a little bit of a, a helpful tool for us to pick out fabrics. Um, so I, I use that quite a bit. So what I like doing actually is, oh, I didn't, I didn't buy new fabric either, Gretchen. I, I um, just kind of reorganized my fabric that I, that I have so I can easily grab and pull things out. So what I like doing is I like looking at this design, you know, we have an example here for us and I'm thinking, you know what, I, this fabric here um, that we're using, I've had this fabric for ages and I have a couple yards of it and I'm like, I love this fabric so much, I finally want to use it. So I knew right off the bat that I wanted the bulk of it, the bulk of this quilt to be this blue and I wanted it to feel like blue was happening in the quilt. So immediately I was like, okay, I'm going to change everything that's pink here to the blue, to this fabric here. And that started to set the tone. So what I like doing is kind of laying out my fabric on the floor in the proportions of what I see in the quilt. So when I decided I wanted the blue as the bulk, I laid, I like unfolded it so I had this big border of blue and then I put some white around it because there's a lot of white in here too. So that immediately gave me kind of a vibe of, okay, what, what this is going to look like. And then I started adding some of the other colors in like smaller squares. I laid them on top of the white to start seeing, okay, what are some of this, what, what would this dark teal look like? And what would this yellow look like? And just started picking. And then I had to make a little guide for myself because, you know, everything that's teal I'm doing in this this fabric. So all this dark teal here, I chose this pink fabric instead. Um, so I, I'm, you know, making guides and stuff as as I'm going here. Use fabrics on your stash and change the colors, but had to look at the picture to see which fabrics next to each other. Yeah, exactly, Lucy. I had to do a little bit of that too. Um, so we had that 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 image beforehand so we could be like oh there's that yellow is next to this light blue okay do I like it the colors that I picked do I you know this this color is going to go next to that color does is that working and when I have all the fabrics kind of laid down kind of where they would sit in the quilt and kind of the proportions then you can take a picture of that and you know at that point you might be like yeah this color here is, I don't know, the pattern's popping out at me too much. I don't, I want it to blend in more. So I'd maybe replace that fabric. Or, or you found a new fabric that you'd really love to get in there somewhere. So you find a, a spot for that. So it's, it's a very malleable thing um, until I'm like, okay, I'm just stopping. This is my final decision. And then at that point, then I just go with it. And it, then everything else is picked from from there. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. That's why I'm okay with kind of grabbing whatever scraps because I know that all these scraps are gonna be in the rest of the quilt somewhere. And uh, that it will be all okay. <laughs> and it might not be what I expected it to be, but, um, you know, I have no idea what this is gonna look like when it's done as a quilt, right? Um, it, it's, it's developing as it goes. So no matter how hard I plan for the colors and stuff, like, um, like how I was just describing, every step of the way, it like reveals more of what it's going to look like, you know? So I never, I never have this whole perfect, beautiful plan of, you know, what it's going to look like. Like I don't, I don't digitize it and, and upload my fabrics or anything like that to know exactly how it'll turn out. I just, I just let it kind of develop. Um, my fabric, um, it's, I, okay, so I personally, you know, you see a lot of these rooms, these like, these sewing rooms where everyone has their fabric um, organized by color. I don't do it that way. I mean, first of all, I don't have a ton of fabric like that, but I don't do it that way because I think, I don't know, 
I suspect that you end up with all these rainbow colored quilts because you're seeing your fabric as a rainbow like that. And I think it's easy to like, ooh, I'll pick some of these greens here ooh, and then I'll pick some of these blues and I'll pick some of these oranges. I think they, like I suspect that you get a lot of rainbow looking quilts. And so I on purpose don't organize it that way. Um, I First of all, I organize I have a lot of fabric that's penguin and fish fabric, like fabric that, that I've designed and, and, and was manufactured and stuff. So that I have separate from all my purchased fabric, like all the fabric that isn't mine. So that's my first division. <laughs> and then, uh, then I've divided it into large cuts of fabric. I have a lot of fat quarters, so I have fat quarters as a separate thing. And the way I fold it is I have a bin that's about this tall and I fold it so they're all in. So I can just see the fold of all the fat quarters. So I can see every fat quarter and pick it out real easily and put it back in like a filing cabinet almost. Um, super duper easily. So it's so I'm not worried about how I'm going to wreck my whole system or whatever. It's so easy to pull them out and put them back in. So I have fat quarters. And they're all in plastic bins. So I have fat quarters in the bins. Because then I can easily move them around as well um, because they're in bins. And then I have larger cuts of fabric, so bigger than a fat quarter in bins. I also have it divided by material. So I have a lot of wool. So all the wool stuff is together. And all the quilting weight cotton is together. And then I have just like random stuff, you know, from wherever, who knows when then all of that I have separately. So I don't have it separated by color. It is all kind of together, just mishmashed because I feel like then I can, then, I, then I'm less precious with them sticking in a certain order. They're just, they're just kind of more by size. So yeah, so for, for like this quilt, for example, I knew that I wanted to make it out of stuff that wasn't my own fabric, and I knew it was quilting weight cotton, right? So that immediately gets rid of a pile of my bins. I know I need quilting weight cotton and the stuff that isn't penguin and fish related. So I get those bins out. I know that I need, for this particular pattern, there was rec like some yardage required, like bigger than fat quarters. And I don't have a lot of that. So I checked out to see what I had. And this blue was one that I had a lot of. And I'm like, dang, I've had that blue forever. It's too precious to use. So that's why it's been in here forever. And that's just silly. It's time to use it. So that's that was decision number one. And then from there, it was just looking at what else I had in those particular bins. I didn't have to search anywhere. I knew I knew where those bins were. And I could pull fat quarters for the stuff that there wasn't, I don't need a ton of. And I searched through my bigger cuts of fabric and found, you know, found the one that we did this heart with. And that's the deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gretchen. Um, so I will, um, I'll show you the bins that I use too, because I got them from Target and they never used to have this size, but then all of a sudden I went there and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And they really work well for the fat quarters. So I'll, I'll show you guys that um, sometime here. And I actually, you know, with the penguin and fish fabric, I had a lot of that on bolts. And I actually, when I cleaned up all my fabric, I took it, I took all the yard, yards, like yards and yards of fabric, I took it all off the bolt and I put those into bins as well. Because I think it's, it's safer in there. And then it, it reduced the space that it took up by like a ton. All right, so let's tie this guy off. Oh yeah, link to the bins too. Yeah, I'll I'll um I'll uh this weekend I'll look into that. How about that? I will bring some up to show you and on Mondays 
Monday's uh, live stream, I'll, I'll make sure to have a link to the bins that I like using after, after we talk to them a little bit. Oh my god, look, it's a flower! All right, let's tie this off. Uh, I do sell my fabric, Alice, and actually, um, well, I only have fat quarters on the website, but now that I've organized all my fabric, I found out that I have a whole lot more penguin and fish fabric than I thought I did. I, I was just keeping the penguin and fish fabric to use um, for myself for, for projects just because it's not being made anymore, any of this penguin and fish fabric. So I was like, kind of like hoarding it, right? But then when I cleaned up everything, I realized that, oh my gosh, I have way more than I thought and I definitely don't need all this. It'd be nicer if other people had it. So um, I might, I, I, I don't really have a huge plan for this yet, but I'm thinking of doing like a little online sale for the yardage. And it's just gonna, I'm just gonna sell it by the yard until it's gone. And it, it, I might even do a Facebook sale where I just be like, okay, here's the next fabric in line. And then just, if you want it, you put like sold or something in the comments. And then I go in the order that people say until it's, until it's gone, just because I only have a certain amount of yardage for every, every fabric. So I might do that or some sort of, um, maybe, um, you know, Black Friday and all that's coming up. So maybe we'll do like every hour you'll get a new email with with the next fabric and you know it's first come first serve sort of thing by by the yard and you know i don't know i don't quite know how i want to do it yet but i do have fabric available it is not i i do have fat quarters online but i don't have the yardage at all online and i have it from all the collections like for my very first collection uh, years ago and like the here kitty kitty fabric and a lot of the the, the stuff that you can't really find anymore um, so I'm, I'm ready to get rid of a lot of it and uh, so we'll do a little sale uh, for that coming up here so I'm I, it's still it's still floating around in my brain it, it needs to get down on paper with some like logic to behind it but then I will I'll let you guys know about that for sure but we have a cute flower here. I am a, like over the moon excited about it. It looks so patchworky and cute. Um, let's, uh, I think we'll probably stop for the night, but I want to just uh, see if I have a little scrap. Well, you know, this is, this is from that same fabric, but this is that butterfly fabric that will be for the circle. I just want to kind of get a look. This is kind of, oh, so what I'm doing right now is what I do when I plan out the whole, um, my, my whole quilt. I, I get the little pieces, except for in this case, it would be a fat quarter or something. And I lay it, I lay it down just to see what it looks like next to the other stuff. So the butterfly fabric will be a little lighter than everything else. And this kind of pale green. And I think it's going to be so Patricky and cute. Oh, Tamara. Okay. Good. I'm, I'm happy you like that idea. Um, it would probably just be by the yard. Maybe I would do by the half yard, but um, just to keep it um, easy, I think it's going to be by the yard. Yeah, auditioning. That's it, Patricia. I like, I like saying it that, like that. I'm auditioning the fabric. I'm, I'm just checking it out. So yeah, awesome. So on Monday, we will come back and I'll show you the fabric bins and stuff just to kind of uh, show how I'm currently organizing it. I mean, you know, I like changing things, you know, I come up with, I find out a new system and then I want to do it that way, but, uh, I'll show you how I'm currently doing it on Monday. And then we will continue making petals for this flower and it'll be just as patchworky. Um, we'll get, we'll get this, this guy can go in here, this pinky one, maybe a couple of pinkies and then, you know, even one of these and then some, some blues, maybe like this. Although I kind of like the yellow, we'll probably get another Another yellow in there too. Yeah, and the fabrics are are fabrics that you, they're just not there anymore. They're um, they are gone, like the Here Kitty Kitty stuff you can hardly find anywhere and, you know, Picnic Pals and all of um, Safari Suite, all of all of my older collections. Sweet tweets, all, whole pile of them. <laughs> I think I have like 11 or 12 collections and um, most all of them you can't find anymore. It's like fashion these days, fabric, you know, 
it's there for six months and then gone after that. Alrighty, guys, uh, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it a day, but we have a real flower developing here. It's not just two sticks coming out of the ground. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it. Hello, hello again. All right, here we are. Oh, it's looking so cute. There it is up close. Oh man, see, needle turn applique is just so sweet. Oh, tonight went by fast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're probably stopping a, a little early too, but it is Friday. I'll let you guys have a little extra time tonight. And thanks so much for sticking around with me too on a, on a Friday, I appreciate it. Uh, but I will get this up on YouTube at, Peng oops, sorry guys, at Penguin and Fish Movies, and um, I'll be back here on Monday. Oh yes, and Madeline, we'll we'll talk about color some more for sure, and um, I'll have to have to show you all my bins and and uh, how I like pulling colors out of it and stuff too. So that'd be that's good. We need to have some color color talking. I think that's definitely something I've struggled with for a long time, and I know a lot of people struggle with that. So we should for sure touch on that uh, more than touch on it probably. So. I will, uh, I'm going to keep that in my head as something that we can do coming up some, in some way. That's got to get out of my head and into some strategy as well. So, all right, guys, I am going to head out. Oh yeah, I put lipstick on tonight. <laughs> ah, all right, have a great weekend, guys. I will see you again on Monday. Good night.